Hey guys, this is Einar and welcome to your 30 second tutorial in basic statistics in Excel. I hope you're doing great today because now we're going to use some of the scatter plots that we created in the last tutorial to approximate if our distribution here of x values is normally distributed or not. Now if you don't know what the normal distribution is, check that tutorial. If you don't know what standardization is in Z, you need to check that tutorial out as well because then you'll understand more about what we're doing now. Right here, it's just a technical tutorial to show you how we can use the scatter plots to, to see if a distribution is normally uh, distributed or not. So first we're gonna pull all our um, x values and subtract uh, the distance from the mean. So begin by calculating the mean. Oops, sorry about that. Go. Average. There we go. So I mark my data set like this. I close the parenthesis and I have my average of 172 centimeters. Now this is actually the, the length in centimeters of the students who took this course uh, last year. So next year we're going to include the, the lengths of the students who are taking this course this year and we'll just get a longer and longer list. So it's going to be great. And we're going to see that it's normally distributed too, or not, depending on what the results we get now. So we're going to pull the standard deviation out of the material too, because we want to standardize uh, our distances from the mean. So we have a standard deviation of 11 centimeters, 11.83 centimeters. So we take each x value and subtract that mean from that and we need to go into this formula here and put in a dollar sign. I'm going to zoom in so you see it properly. We need a dollar sign here right there in order to fix it so it's always the same. We pull it all the way down through our data set and we have our distances from the mean. Excellent. Now we're going to take each of these distances and divide by the standard deviation, fix it with a dollar sign and we got our standardized values for the, these distances. So we have our standardized values here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put them on the axis, uh, x-axis in our scatter plot, and we're going to put these lengths in the y-axis of our scatter plot. Okay, so x-axis, y-axis. Now, why is that? Well, because on this x-axis we want uh, to see how how our lengths are distributed along uh, and around the mean, which is going to be zero uh, when you have these on the x-axis, and that means also that we can compare different uh, variables to each other using different scatter plots if we have the z values here on the x-axis. That's why we're standardizing. Um, <clears throat> so we begin by uh, marking our Z values like that. We go to insert and we choose scatter. And there we go, we have inserted a scatter plot. I'm gonna make it slightly smaller so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, to begin with, this looks kind of weird. This doesn't look like the type of scatter plot we want at all. No, because we're not done yet. What we need to do now is to begin with, we're going to delete this series here because that's just ugly. I'm going to delete these lines because I don't like them, but that's just a matter of taste. And then I'm going to right click and go to select data. Okay, so here in select data, we're going to make sure that we have our Z values on the X axis and Y values on the Y uh, axis, or in other, other words, our lengths on the Y axis. So I choose series here. I go to edit. And I uh, enter this edit series uh, menu where I can choose here under series x values and series y values what values to have on each axis. I begin by deleting the y, y values I want to have there because I actually want these lengths, the lengths in centimeters of our uh, data set to be on the y axis. And likewise, I want the z values to be on the x axis like that. And now I have it there. So I click OK. I click OK again and we take a look at our. Uh, scatter plot that we just created. Now this is, can actually be used to do the approximation itself because now we do have the z values here on the, um, on the x-axis. We can see that the observations are collected around zero, which is our mean in this case. Um, and we can start, you know, making assumptions. But, you know, this is a matter of taste. Uh, some people like to place the y-axis here, actually. So what we need to do is manually decide, tell Excel that, okay, we're going to move the y-axis here to a different location. So what I do is I mark my x value, x values, I right click, I go to, oh, you can't see that because it's outside of the screen, there we go. I right click and I go to format axis, there we go. <clears throat> and in this menu here, I go to vertical axis crosses and I choose a new manual value. And if I wanted to cross on minus two, I write manually minus two there on axis value. And there we go, That the y-axis moved over and we can start conducting our analysis. Now, how do we uh, ana anal analyze this? Well, in a normal distribution, we want the observations to be symmetrically uh, arranged around the mean, which also means that um, for each of these uh, x values, we want them to be co collected around our mean, which is going to be zero, and we want them to be r rather evenly distributed. So we do have a, a big gap here. That's a problem. We have a lot of distances here on the, on the minus side that are 
unproportionally large compared to the ones on the plus side. But on the other hand, we do have a gap here on the plus side too. So I guess, I guess in this case, it would kind of even out and be collected around the mean anyway. But we don't like this large gap. So that's a problem when we're normal approximating. That's an issue. Um, also, um, we want most of the observations to be kind of located here in the center and not an extreme observations out in the, in the corners. And I think that we do have that. So I would say we have a fairly normally distributed variable, which is very common when you're measuring lengths. It's actually a classic example of a normally distributed uh, variable. And as an example of a non-normal distribution, I'm going to show you this, which is um, <clears throat> the number of Facebook friends that tango dancers have. Uh, and you can see here that, sure, it seems to be fairly normally distributed for a certain number of friends, but then we have these extreme observations. We have some people that have extremely many fa friends on Facebook. Now, they may have certain characteristics which are special. They're still of interest to sociologists. In fact, this result in, in itself for a sociologist is really interesting because that means, hey, who are these guys? We need to investigate them closer. They are extreme observations. Um, but if we excluded them, we would see that we would probably have a fairly normally distributed uh, variable. The, the average would move slightly in that, this direction and we would get them you know, sort of collected around that average. But here we see we have two huge distances on the plus side here, going from zero all the way up there, bam, going from uh, zero and whoa, all the way up there, which is an enormous distance. And it's going to pull our average up, and it's going to screw up our normal distribution curve if we made one. So this is an extremely positively skewed normal distribution. And we can see that from this scatter plot, which is an excellent way of approximating if your data set is normally or not using a very pedagogical uh, diagram. So that's it for me. Uh, try putting in some extreme values here. Take a person who, for example, is like 300 centimeters long. That doesn't exist. But you'll see now, oh, now it's not normally distributed anymore because we have this extreme observation. Likewise, if we had a person who was 5 centimeters long, that would be an extreme observation too, but in the other direction. So play around with this, try, try putting in some extreme observations and making new analysis if this is normally distributed or not. Uh, have some fun and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Have a great day guys. Bye bye.